بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم my talk is about fracture lateral humeral uh, condyle in uh, children it represents 15% of elbow fractures it's only second to uh, supracondylar humeral uh, fracture as an instance in children and the average age uh, most common age is about six years Uh, this is different from supracondylar humeral fracture because there is a concern about joint incongruity and the congruity of the articular surface of the distal humerus and also it is a physial injury. So it has a reflection of later uh, growth. Milch, the most common classification we know is Milch classification. Uh, it's classified into type one is the shear force that pass through the uh, epiphysi uh, of the ossific nucleus of the capitula. And type two is an avulsion fracture and the fracture line pass through the trochlea. Um, it is diagnosed as type one is Salter Hals type five, four and type two is Salter Hals type two. I have many doubt about this because in both we, the fracture cross the physial line of the distal humerus. This is really a mechanistic uh, classification. It is not uh, uh, a classification that guides treatment. So we have to use other classifications to guide treatment. The most common is Jacob classification. Uh, there is type one. There is fracture that's not extended to the articular surface. It's not extended to the joint line. So there is minimum displace, displacement less than two uh, millimeter. And stage two is in place fracture or undisplaced fracture with the minimum gap less than two millimeter also. But the difference is that the fracture line extend to the articular surface. Type three is displaced or rotated. And the, there is a gap beyond or more than two millimeter or four millimeters. The minimum displaced types, type one and two, the gap is less than two millimeter, but the displaced, the gap is more than two millimeter or rotated uh, fracture. But whether the fracture line passed through the articular surface or not, this is carry a very prognostic, very important prognostic sign. Because if the fracture is not passing through the articular line, then and the articular cartilage is intact, then this fracture carry a very low risk for displacement. But if it extends to the articular surface and there is fracture of the articular cartilage, then there is a higher risk of displacement. And this guide treatment. And Jacob differentiated between these two types by measuring the lateral gap and the medial gap of the fracture line. If the lateral gap is more than the medial gap, this means or points to that the articular surface is intact. But if the medial gap equal the lateral gap, then this fracture most probably passing the articular cartilage and extended to the joint space. Song et al. in, uh, in, eight, uh, in 28 uh, added or subclassified the lateral humeral condyle fracture into type 1, which is uh, only metaphysial fracture, not extended to the physis. Type 2, it is un minimally displaced fracture without extension to the articular space and the articular cartilage of the joint is intact and stage three is undisplaced fracture that extend to the articular surface these two types are type one and two jacob classification he subclassified the type three of the jacob uh, which is displaced fracture into many uh, into displaced and rotated so The type 4 and 5 are displaced the fracture, and the type 1, 2, 3 are undisplaced fracture or displacement less than 2 millimeter. But he pointed to a very important point that these measurements and this assessment 
shouldn't be done in anteroposterior or lateral view. It should be done in anteroposterior view with internal rotation. This means oblique view of the elbow with internal rotation. Please do this view for every child you suspect internal, as so you suspect in him, uh, 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 lateral humeral condyle fracture. This is an example of type 3. For in the anteroposterior view, it seems that only metaphyseal fracture not extended to the articular surface, but in the oblique view, it is extended to the articular surface with a medial gap equal to the lateral gap. This means that the fracture is extended to the articular space and there is fracture of the articular cartilage. MRI, of course, can differentiate uh, uh, this type clearly. Type four, which is displacement more than two millimeter. Look here in the anteroposterior view, it looks it's minimally displaced, is less than two millimeter. But in the internal oblique view, the gap is clear. So don't assess or classify lateral humor condyle fracture in the anteroposterior view, only in the internal oblique view. Another example of type four wide displacement, although the anteroposterior view looks with minimum displacement. Another example here, the anteroposterior view looks very innocent, without displacement, almost without displacement. But look at the internal oblique view, very wide displacement. This is type 4. Type 5 is completely, completely displaced and even rotated, like this case. The treatment recommendation if we have a minimum displacement less than two millimeter gap, we can use a cast. But in this, we can use the cast safely if the, 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 the lateral gap is more than the medial gap. This means the articular cartilage is intact and the incidence of displacement is about 27%. We can use cast. But if we are uh, if the fracture is extended to the articular cartilage, then the risk of displacement or later displacement with follow-up will be more than 40%. So less than two millimeter, and we are sure it's not extended to the articular surface, then we can use cast. But more than two millimeter, type four and five, either rotated or not, this is an indication for surgery. Surgery either open reduction internal fixation, which is the standard, or corrosive reduction and percutaneous panic, and this is not the, the, the classic treatment in all uh, cases. The problem is in fractures, undisplaced or displaced with less than two millimeter gap, and the fracture is extended to the articular surface. It carries a risk of displacement of about 47%. And in these cases, better to do surgery. But if the patient, for example, is refusing surgery, trying to avoid surgery as much as possible, then we have to follow up this patient uh, meticulously in casts every week to ensure that there is no further displacement. And we have to warn the parents that if we notice any displacement during the follow-up in cast, we have to shift for surgery. We can diagnose the undisplaced fracture that extend to the articular surface by uh, MRI, but sometimes it's difficult to be diagnosed with ultrasonography. So surgery is indicated once we have displaced more than two millimeter. And in cases of less than two millimeter, with there is concern about stability, if, there is, if it is extended to the articular surface, or concern about the ability of the parents to comply with follow-up if they are not sure that these parents will come every week and do an x-ray. The open reduction is the internal fixation is uh, uh, the standard for displaced fracture or any rotational unstable fracture. We use, it is done through the lateral approach and directly to the lateral border of the distal humerus between the triceps and brachioradialis. And we have to do an open reduction depending on reduction of the articular surface and fix it with K-wire 
key wires should be introduced one transverse and one oblique across the vices. It's better to use wires to avoid injury of the vices. You can use the screws mentioned, but the screws has to be removed, not to arrest the growth of the vices of the distal humerus. Our tips for uh, uh, open reduction internal fixation, we have to use, uh, it's better to use sterile tourniquet uh, don't use the lateral, the, the congruity of the lateral border or the lateral metaphysis to the, to the, with the epiphyseal fragment uh, as a guide for reduction. Don't use this because usually there is a, a step and uh, this is normal. And if we depend it upon it, we may miss a proper reduction of the lateral humeral condyle. We have to stay anterior to avoid injury of the blood supply of the epiphyseal fragment, it is mandatory to open the anterior capsule and to ensure anatomical reduction of the lateral humeral condyle fragment. And uh, this is the only guide for proper exact anatomical reduction is to visualize the articular uh, surface and I prefer inserting the pins through the skin and to be removed with the removal of the cast, but others prefer to bury it under the skin. There is no problem. If uh, you are using screws, uh, then uh, they are buried under the skin, but have to be uh, removed. So to take home message, the lateral condyle fracture is a physial intraarticular fracture. We have to assist displacement in the internal oblique view. Don't judge the uh, displacement in an anteroposterior lateral view only. Open reduction is the gold standard for treatment of displaced uh, fracture more than two millimeters. But if the, there is doubt about stability and we are in doubt that the fracture, even if it is undisplaced and reaching the articular surface, then it's better to be fixed because treatment of malunited humoral, lateral humoral fracture or ununited uh, fracture or missed long-standing displaced fracture is very difficult, does not carry the good prognosis uh, of treatment of acute uh, fractures. Thank you very much.